to the Kendrick Show show. It is another edition of Boss Lady Monday, and I could not be happier than to welcome Ruby Freemall. Freemall, I did, I messed it up. Sorry. <laughs> Again, I butcher names every week. Freemall, Freemall is, is from, it's French, it's French, French sounding, Freemall, to the show. She, you, Unless you've been under a rock, you know Ruby. Her work has uh, been around for a while. She has an event called Amplified Soul. Amplified Soul, is that right? Yeah, Amplified Soul Live. Amplified Soul Live in Los Angeles. I'm doing yeah. this from memory. Um, in the in the early early spring or late winter, depending on where you live, every year. And we were just chatting about that before the top of the show. So we're going to talk about that. But welcome to the show, Ruby. It's such an honor to have you. I'm super stoked to be here, Kendrick. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It is our total pleasure. Ruby and I travel in the same circles, uh, same people, the same people, but we've never really officially met. So uh, I'm super stoked as well to be finally meeting you and also talking about, I believe, one of the most overlooked topics in building a successful business. So I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have an expert here to talk about that. So Ruby, you were sharing with me before we started live with everybody that you feel like you've kind of started over from scratch in your business. You kind of tore everything apart and started over. So can you tell us a little bit about what that means right now? Yeah. Um, what that means is I'm scared as fuck every single day. <laughs> Truth be told. Um, but really it was just, I had reached a point in my, in my business where everything was, all the moving parts were in place and everything was moving well. I was making money, I was doing all the things, things were working, but things weren't feeling aligned or exciting anymore. Something was missing. It was like as if I was hit, uh, missing the mark on something that felt more soulful. And I realized that there were ways for me to bring in more of what I truly want in my business in order to make it feel more aligned with like my, my true purpose. You know, I, I just, I wanted to, remove everything so that I had a clean slate so that I could start bringing in only the things that truly excite me because without excitement and passion, I mean, I, I don't see any point to running a business. Yeah, I, I agree. But I, I think that for anybody watching, I just want you to pause and think about that for a minute. Cause what a brave and courageous thing to do to have a business that is quote unquote, making it, whatever that means, you're helping people, you're making money, you, you know what to do. You've sort of cracked the code for how to connect with your people and help them and make money in your own way. And to say, you know what, this doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And to, to say, we're going to scratch a whole lot of things. We're going to kind of get to go back to maybe step one, step two, maybe step three. That's very brave. I don't know a lot of people. I know a lot of people who complain about not feeling aligned. I know a lot of people who say it doesn't feel right. I'm not as happy. I don't know a lot of people who are willing to say, yeah, let's scratch the whole thing and start over. So that's mm -hmm. takes a lot of guts. Tell us about, I would love for you to share what feeling. So when you say not aligned, what were you specifically feeling in those moments when it didn't feel aligned? Are you able to describe that or was it just sort of an intuitive thing? Yeah, I mean, it's half intuitive, half like really visceral because if it, it, like, look, I'm a life coach. I'm a certified life coach. I went to school. I can work with anyone, you know, just like doctors can work with any types of patients. I can work with anyone, but there's specific types of clients who excite me to no end because I feel like they, in helping them, that helps me fulfill my greater purpose, which is really to help move the collective consciousness pull forward. Like I really am here to build a voice, an army of voices so that we can all impact the world. Cause I believe it takes more than one leader. So for me, it was the feeling of, of, I don't feel as fulfilled as I know I can be. And I don't feel as excited as I know I have the ability to feel. Um, and something just intuitively wasn't hitting the mark you know, and it was in terms of who I was serving, um, where I was really spending my energy, uh, because there are certain things that leave you feeling so depleted, you know, like I was doing a lot of things, but I would end up feeling depleted after a lot of those things. And then there were things that I would do and I would end up feeling excited and charged. So there was a very big difference. And so really understanding what are the things that leave me feeling charged and what are the things that are leaving me feeling depleted? So what's an example of something that you were doing that was leaving you feeling depleted? Can you think of anything specific? 
Definitely. So um, when I first started coaching, I was a self-love coach at the very, very beginning. And I created a Facebook group called the Self-Love Tribe. And that group, I've never done ads for it. I've never done anything to it. And it organically grew to 4,000 members. And I was super present in it for the first year. And then after that, the next two, two and a half years, I started weaning off. I started scheduling more. It felt depleting. There was a lot of um, stuff happening and conversations happening in the group that didn't align with the type of people that I really enjoyed serving. And it felt like it was um, sucking my energy. Yeah. But I had 4,000 people in it. So it was like, okay, do I try and convert these people and change this group into something different, which I did. I really did try to do that. I made an attempt and I made it about empowerment, but it still wasn't shifting. Or do I just get rid of it? Which is something that a lot of people don't have the balls to do. Yeah. Yeah. But I I had to. It kind of defies which is what intuition and what your gut does and being in the one, but it kind of defies business sense, right? Right. So if you just look at it from a straight business perspective, you've got these 4,000 people who have said, yes, they want to hear from you, who you can help. So it defies business logic. But as you and I both know, if we only rely on business logic, it makes, makes for not a very successful business and an unhappy business. So it's right. right. Yeah. So talk about the people that you do like to help. Obviously you stepped up to the plate. You said, okay, I am going to go all in with this change. It needs to feel a certain way. Who are the people that you, you love to help that fire you up that, that, that don't sort of suck your energy away, if you will. Right. It's um, the purpose driven entrepreneurs, leaders, creatives, uh, any, anyone who is in a space of, pursuing their actual purpose so they understand or they have a a somewhat clear idea of what the purpose is what the vision is and they're in pursuit of it but they are dealing with their own glass ceilings and their own limits and their own belief systems that's not helping them rise up to the plate to do what it is that they know that they're here to do so it's purpose-driven leaders creatives entrepreneurs influencers Um, anyone who is in that position of pursuing something that is more heart centered and purpose driven. And so when you say they're not really doing the things or that they've got their own glass ceilings, which Mm -hmm. is an interesting choice of words and they're not rising up, which is Mm -hmm. rise up to my favorite words. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Is it that they need more business coaching? Is it that Mm -hmm. what's getting in their way? What is the glass ceiling? Well, they think they need more business coaching as to, you know, every, I think when it comes to entrepreneurship, if an entrepreneur were to decide between business coach and a life coach and the business coach is promising, here's an ROI, like here, I'm going to help you earn 10 K in a month, or I'm going to help you do this in this. Whereas the life coach, we're here sitting like, I'm going to help you get your shit together. It's not as tangible for them to understand. So Mm -hmm. This is about, you know, they, they think they want more business coaching, but what they really need is the life coaching so that they can get their shit together so that they can gain a deeper understanding of themselves and, and the reasons why they're not hitting the targets that they want to hit, the reasons why they're stopping themselves and even like opening their eyes to all the ways in which they are stopping themselves or getting in their own way. Yeah, I think that this is really overlooked, as you and I were talking about before the top of the show. I think that, you know, and, 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 and probably not purposely or intentionally, but at, at, as many people say, nothing brings up your own junk like starting your bit of business. And, and I will tell you that every day, every single day, I life coach myself. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a trained life coach as well, and I have to life coach myself. I have to get out of my own way. First thing, first thing every morning in order to do this work that I love, in order to put myself out there, in order to show up and be the person that I need to be to help my people. And so, uh, and and there's no formula for that, you know, no business coach is going to give me that. I'll tell you a funny story, Ruby. When Mm -hmm. I was, uh, when I was running masterminds, I used to send out uh, a, 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 life coaching book to them all. One year I sent Brooke Castillo's uh, The Art of Self-Coaching or Self-Coaching 101. Mm-hmm. One year I sent out Martha Beck's uh, Steering by Starlight. Mm-hmm. And I would say, here's what I know. 
I'm going to give you 5,952 things to do over the course of this year, and it's going to bring up so much stuff that I do not want to coach you around, that I am not good at coaching you around, and so I'm giving you a book. If you, I highly recommend you have a life coach to get through this experience with me, but if not, the, I'm going to provide you a resource, learn these tools. And mm -hmm. when people would freak the flip out, and they would all the time, mm -hmm. I know what I'm good at, I know my strengths, I know whether or not, I'd be like... You need, it. you need to pull out your book. That is not a how to lead your customers. That is a, I'm afraid to put myself out there and I can't help you with that. Yeah. So it's so important, but it's so overlooked. So tell me, you're the expert here. Why is it so important? Why does entrepreneurship bring up so much of our own junk? Well, here's the thing, you know, we're so used to living inside our comfort zones and we all know that nothing happens there. So once you start to step outside your comfort zone, you know, you start to expand the bubble. So you start to step outside as you do in entrepreneurship. When you step outside your comfort zone, you're going to be hit with a whole other layer of beliefs that you have either not been aware of, or it's a deeper level of those beliefs. Like, not worthy. You know, that's a very common one. I don't feel worthy of attaining the success or I don't feel worthy of achieving all these things, or I don't have what it takes. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not this enough. And as you continue to expand outside that bubble, you're opening yourself up to greater challenges, right? Like entrepreneurship, one of the common misconceptions is it gets easier with time. <laughs> it what? does it. No, it doesn't. like all these people feeding this bullshit are, I mean, oh my God, I just, I, I want to like put them all in one side of the planet and close the door and throw away the lock. Like they're not, they, this is a complete disservice to the entrepreneurial industry. It does not get easier. We get better at managing it. That's what happens. But you're going to, as you grow as an entrepreneur, face bigger challenges and take bigger risks and bigger challenges and bigger risks come with bigger fears and bigger beliefs that you need to get over, that you need to push through. And so without the proper tools to do that, you're going to be faced with fear and you're going to walk the other way. You're going to say, no, this feels too scary. Unconsciously, you're going to say, no, this feels too scary. And you're going to go the other way and pick something that feels easier. Or a belief is going to drop down like, well, I'm not worthy of achieving success. And then you will somehow self-sabotage yourself. But all of this stuff happens like in our unconscious, right? So without those tools and without the awareness, you're going to continue to fall victim to these things. Yeah, I, I think it's so true. I think one of the things, and, and those limiting beliefs, I, I uh, adopted a, a phrase from Susan Haya. I call it mind crack. Mm -hmm. And uh, Martha Beck calls it your lizard. I don't care what you call it, but those limiting beliefs, I, I say all the time to my colleagues, my limiting beliefs get smarter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, where, what I used to be able to recognize is straight up fear of failure. I'm going to, I'm going to go broke. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to be a bad mom. If I do this, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. They're smarter now. Like I can give myself a legitimate business reason why I shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do, and, and I'm not about taking uncalculated or, or, or just, you know, taking all kinds of risks. That's not what I'm saying, but I can now, I've been successful long enough to rationalize my fear away mm -hmm. to say, well, actually you probably don't need to spend that money on launch videos because X, Y, Z, or yeah. you're not taking private clients. So you probably should scale back on X, Y, Z because, and, and really I'm just giving into the fear, the fear mm -hmm. of what if, what if it doesn't mm -hmm. work this time? What if the whole market's changed. What if I end up at blah, 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 right? I mean, it's all yeah. fear. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's such an important point and distinction for what you're saying is that it doesn't get easier. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, the closest I've ever been to quitting was probably during my most successful time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get easier. It gets harder. And, um, I, I think that I, I'm with you. If you, if you can find the room, I'll get the key in the lock to lock others <laughs> that are preaching easy. Cause and nothing about this is easy. And no, and, and if it was easy, everybody'd be doing it anyway. I mean, like it just doesn't make rational sense, but I'm off on a tangent. So what are some things Ruby that I know you live this. I know that you, you, you really embody this in your own work, which makes you so such a powerful, powerful example for everybody watching. What are some things that, some, some signs that our people can look for to say, actually, I need Ruby versus I need to learn a skill set. I need to learn how to sell. I need to learn how to whatever. Well, they're, they're, I would imagine that the, 
pain points present differently. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I mean, number one, I think the number one sign is if you're sitting there right now thinking to yourself, but I've tried all the things and I've done all the things and nothing's working. I'd say that's a great one. I am yeah. right there with you. Not to give you my validation, but yes, absolutely. What are there others? Yeah. And then the second one is um, you don't really resonate with other, what other business coaches or what other people are saying. Like you've actually tried or you've attempted, you've done these courses, you've, you've attempted to put some of these pieces into play, but nothing feels right. Um, so that's also an invitation to look within because there's something within you that's saying, Hey, there's another way that feel that's going to feel a lot better, but you're resisting listening to that for whatever reasons. And, and we can work through that. That's a, I've never heard that before. You're resisting listening for whatever reasons. Can we talk a little bit about that? Cause yeah. I never heard that, heard about that, but, um, I think I may do that in my own business. So, yeah. So I'm gonna tell you what I think that means. And then you tell me if I'm right. Okay. So let's say that um, there's this great opportunity for a book to read that I, I, I kind of know I need to read, or there's this great free training. So it's not even going to cost me any money that I think, oh yeah, I'd like to learn about that, but I never sit down and do it. Is that what you mean by resisting opportunities to learn or is it different? Well, that's one way. Okay. What I was specifically speaking about is resisting, like listening to your own intuition or your own inner voice of trusting yourself. So how like, do you know when you're doing that? So when there's a part of you, so resistance feels like conflict. It feels like okay. internal conflict. It feels like you're in a battle with yourself. So it's when you're on the cusp of say making a decision or doing something, say you're working with someone, they tell you to, Hey, you have to build your email list this way. And there's a part of you that's like, wait, I feel like there's a way that's going to be better. And then the butt comes in. You're like, but this works for her or him. And this works for so many other people. So I should Got do it. it this way. So it's like questioning, you know, I call it the butt head. <laughs> oh, well, how great is that? I may have to adopt that too. I'll absolutely give you credit, but that's awesome. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, because like your intuition is the voice that speaks first your head is the, the voice that comes in saying, but yeah. you know, your intuition is the first voice that comes up and then your head goes, but this might happen or, but this is going to, this isn't going to work. Or so it's really like helping people develop that self-trust in themselves. I mean, there's so many people, I mean, I can't tell you how many people I've worked with where they tell me that they lose sight of their purpose and what they want to do so easily because they are distracted by what other people are doing. Yeah. You know, they get distracted and social media is amazing. It helps us connect, but it also has made comparison itis a plague in our industry yep. and people get caught up in that. And it's like, well, what if you were to find a way to not get caught up in comparison itis, what would become possible in your life? And that's not shit that's taught in business classes or, or no. through a business coach. That's, that's life stuff. That's your own internal bullshit that yeah. we got to work through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That makes absolute perfect sense. So if you're sitting here and you're thinking, you know what, I've tried everything and it didn't work for me. It's not going to work for me. That's one red flag or alarm mm -hmm. bell. Also, if you find yourself, um, what about, what about if you just, so when you talk about this conflict, right? When it, 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 this inner conflict, I would imagine that that feels tight or does it feel mm -hmm. different for different people or, no, it feels restrictive. It feels uh, if it can come out, come off as anxiety, you know, anxiety comes up when we are dealing with internal conflicts a lot yeah. of the times. Um, so it, it feels restrictive. Great. And so it is the first step then. So if you're feeling this tightness and this restrictiveness, or you find yourself thinking, I, I did, I did the work and I didn't get the results. By the way, I've been there mm -hmm. and I will 100% say that the problem was me. Amen. Me too. I mean, and I, I mean, and I could, I, you know, I'm a salesperson, so I could sell you on all and myself on all the reasons that this was a bad investment. And now six years later, I, I can look back and say, Holy mother of God, all of those things were just stories. I was telling myself it was 100% me. Look yeah. at all the stuff I got. So, mm -hmm. um, but that's neither here nor there. So what's the first step is the first step then to immediately go out and, and start looking for a coach like you is the first step to sit down and kind of, yeah. So if you're feeling these things, where do people start? 
Uh, it, you know, I always say it has to be the willingness. Like you have to be willing to want this type and this type, uh, type of support and help and guidance because in order to work with a life coach, you need to be coachable. You need to be someone who's open to and willing to face your own internal demons and to face your own shadows and to face your own, you know, every aspect of yourself. Um, and if you're not at that space in that space yet, then get there. So it's, you know, the first ownership, ownership. Yes. I call it owning your shit. So you have to be in a space where you can say, Oh, you know what? Yes, it's me. You have to be willing to say that and be brave enough to say that. Like, yep, this is me. I own my shit. You know that before it's not something you learned during. Okay. No, I mean, during you'll learn a whole bunch of other stuff you can own your shit for but you need to be in that space of like owning your shit because if you are in victim mentality if you're just gonna sit there and be like nothing's working everything sucks this coach ripped me off and blah 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 then no one no one is gonna be able to help you no one yeah from your mouth to god's ear (laughs) ear, whoever's ear people that don't have ears i agree yeah Absolutely agree. Yeah. So it has to start with you just taking ownership of that, of being like, okay, you know what? The common denominator here is me. There's got to be something that I'm not doing or I'm not putting into play or I'm not seeing. And I welcome the support of someone to help me see things differently. So this is not going to be popular what I'm about to say. And <laughs> no judgment here. I'm just repeating a story. But I, uh, I, I went to a church in Atlanta, Georgia years ago. and um, I, the, they were talking about, um, a, like a divorce support group. Again, no judgment. This is just a mm-hmm. story. So, um, I, the, the pastor stood up and, and the pastor's one of the greatest communicators of our time, whether you agree with what he's saying or not, Andy Stanley is a great communicator. And, um, and I, and I don't agree with a lot of the things that he said, <laughs> but at the time I probably did. I, I've been on my own evolution, yeah. which is a different story, but yeah. at the Um, I probably did. And um, he was talking about this woman who had been divorced three, four, five times. And he said, you know what? She, she married bad men. She did. She married bad men, but you know what the common denominator was her. And there was no judgment there. It was, Mm -hmm. we need to get her to love herself. So she doesn't continue to put herself in these abusive relationships. So she doesn't continue to make these bad choices because the common denominator here was her. And, 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 And that hit me like a ton of bricks because I think until that point in my life, I always had a villain, Mm -hmm. you know, it was, well, my job, or I'm too far away, or if I just make this much money, or if I just pay this off or, and then, and it trans, it translated over past that. Uh, because once I started my business, it was, well, if I could just get this number of clients, if I could just make this much money, there was always a villain and always a reason that I wasn't happier than I was in that moment. Mm-hmm. And the common denominator was me. It was mm-hmm. me. And I still work that every day. I, maybe I need some life coaching. Actually. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that was, I mean, that for me was my rock bottom moment. And the thing that got me into coaching anyways was realizing it was me, you know, all along. It was me. You know, my, I am a former addict and I, and I say former addict. I know some people don't agree with that, but yes, I do say that. I'm a former addict and I come from a cycle of abusive relationships and it was always why me, why me, why me, why does, why do these things keep happening to me? And I'd always find myself at rock bottom and I I basically for a little while hovered at rock bottom until it really got bad. And it was in that point in time, there was a little epiphany of like, wait a second, I've been making all these choices. Like I chose to stay with this guy for so long, even though, and no one's been forcing me to drink alcohol and do copious amounts of drugs. No one's, no one's forced me to do these things. I continue to choose these things. So I started questioning myself, why am I choosing these things? And it all came down to self-love and self-worth, which is why when I first started, I started as a self-love coach, but through my own evolution as a human being and, and me evolving. I mean, and this goes back to what we started talking about at the beginning is like, it's a disservice for me to not reflect my personal evolution into my business. So if I continue to just do the self love stuff and not do everything that I've learned up until this point, it doesn't, it's a disservice to my people. So 
you know, at the end of the day, like this worthiness piece is such a huge piece, but it's all the programming that we fed ourselves or chosen to hold on to. That's the stuff that's holding you back from reaching that potential, from reaching the success. That's the reason why so many entrepreneurs give up in their first, you know, couple of years because it gets hard. It you know? does. It does. And I think that I, I mean, a lot of people watching and listening are going to be newer entrepreneurs. And, you know, I, I also think that this is not the right way to do it, but there's a level of, of self-determination that can get you through. If you're really determined, get you through those first couple of years that I think, and maybe this is my own experience, but the harder part is when you're at year four or five or mm -hmm. nothing feels right. And mm -hmm. you used to love to go to work every day. And all of a sudden you're like, I don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I would rather A, B, and C, I, you know? And so, but I, I think that both of those problems, maybe you do need to change. I'm not saying that you don't, but I think mm -hmm. both of those, or, or tell me, I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. Both of those could be signs that there's that internal conflict in this, this, uh, some people, maybe it's an upper limit thing. Maybe it's not, but there's something right. going on that you have to address within you. For sure. For sure. And I love that you said, you know, four or five year mark, because that was me, right? Last year was my third year and my, my biggest year yet financially. And then I was like, fuck it. This doesn't feel good. Starting fresh at year four. Uh, um, yeah. That is, I know I said it's top of the show. So freaking brave. So great. <laughs> go, go right ahead. I'm sorry. So, I mean, and, and that's, it's like, yes, it's upper limits for sure. You know, the people who have reached it, who have come this far, you know, you've reached year four and five in entrepreneurship, bravo. Like you have stuck with it for that long. That is amazing. That is an incredible feat. But now things aren't feeling that great. You kind of feel, it's a sense of stagnancy. Like you yeah. kind of feel stagnant, even though you might have like a little bit of a steady growth, there's a sense of internal stagnancy. Like, is this it? Is this really it? is this, is this all you get bored? You know, you, nothing's exciting. And it's like, it's because unconsciously you are stopping yourself or holding you back yourself back from going to even greater levels. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's fantastic. And you know, I think that one of the things that a great, a great excuse that I use <laughs> you, and I'm wondering if you see this a lot is I don't have time. Mm -hmm. So opportunities I mean, pop up great opportunities, amazing opportunities that four years ago you would have killed for. Like mm -hmm. literally you might have seriously killed somebody yes. for them. And I'm joking, but <laughs> literally joking. But um, you're like, I just don't have time. I'm too busy running the business. I'm too busy doing this. And then all of a sudden six months go by and you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't even worked on that book that the publisher right. wants to write. Or I haven't even that's self-sabotage in its own way. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Time is an excuse, you know, and yeah. I say this all the time and trust me, I've used the excuse. I, I still continue to use that excuse, but I catch myself out of it. Right. And that's what the, what coaching and, and just doing that self work, the work on yourself in addition to your business helps you become aware of the excuses that you continue to feed yourself. We create time for the things that are most important to us. Now yeah. there are things like, say there's a book, right? You have the publishers waiting and you're like, Oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. Maybe there's a fear involved. Maybe there's a belief like this isn't going to be good enough. And because you have that belief of this isn't going to be good enough, you self-sabotage. So you don't actually sit down to write the book. You know what I mean? So there's like layers upon layers of these beliefs that we're carrying. And if you're not aware of what these beliefs are, it is absolutely impossible for you to push through them and do what it is that you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. What if you do have the awareness? So mm -hmm. let's say you do have the awareness or through, through what you've generously shared today, people are like, Oh yeah, I do that. I do that. What's the next step? So the first step is awareness, right? You need to be coachable. You need to be willing to own your own stuff. Let's say we're there. Somebody's like, okay, I'm there, but now what I want out of this struggle. What's the next step for them? Call me. There you go. Call me, maybe. Call me. Hey, I just met you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love it. And there you have it right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So I want to shift gears really quickly to talk about your event next year, because I know that it is, it's less than a year away. Yeah. But one of the questions I get asked all the time is, 
what events should I go to? What, what right. events should I plan for? Because you know, you have to plan to be away. Lots of people plan to be away with their kids. It costs money. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Amplified Soul Live next year and, and why we need to keep it on our radar. Yeah. So the one, one thing I will say, um, I'll say a few things. So I designed Amplified Soul Live to be different from other events because I've been to those events, the personal development events where you go, you feel super motivated for three days and then, or two days, you know, it's super rah, rah energy. Then you go home and you feel good for maybe a week and you plateau and you know, you do a nosedive and you're like, okay, shit, here I am back at the pits of where I was. And that sucks. And, and I feel like, I felt like one of the things that was missing with all these events is the integration piece. They throw a lot of content at you. You know, you're literally sitting in your chair, your butt falls asleep and you're watching the stage and you're just watching people talking, you're taking notes. And where is the point of, of integration, you know, and without integration, we don't learn anything. It's like reading books and not doing the work involved with the book, you know, mm -hmm. not doing what's recommended. So, I designed Amplified Soul Live to be a highly integrative event where, you know, maybe I'm only going to share with you like three specific tools, but I'm going to teach you how to use those tools because we're going to use them at the event. It's also different because there's a lot of connection time. Um, when you have a room full of amazing people, why would you not want them to connect? You know, and if it's the type of event where you're just staring at a stage all, all day, there's no time for connection. So I incorporate, I build in the time for connection. It's not really insanely long hours. There's time to connect throughout the event. And um, this event is really geared towards purpose-driven leaders, like purpose-driven entrepreneurs, purpose-driven artists, creatives, influencers, people who are here with a purpose, with a mission, and they want the tools or they want to gain the know-how to rise above the noise and create impact, right? Because yep. nowadays there's a lot of people doing a lot of great things but it all sounds like noise. Like everyone's kind of competing on top of each other. So how do you stand out? How do you make the impact that you want to make? And so that's what the event is all about. And, you know, it's highly engaging, highly integrative. Um, I collaboration and connection over division and competition. That's one of the mantras. And um, it really happens. Like the last two years, I've seen all the attendees like collaborate on projects, do videos together, do podcasts together, like collaborate on workshops together. It's been incredible just to witness that and see my intentions come into fruition. Because I think that's the other thing with the entrepreneurial space and the personal growth space is it's lonely. You know, it the, is it's so lonely and like personal growth, the more that you grow and learn about yourself, the more you start to outgrow your friends and family, yeah. you know, yeah. and then you add entrepreneurship to it. Yep. And people don't get it. People don't understand like, Oh, I really want to work all these hours or I really want to do these things. They don't get that you prioritize things differently. So you're like hit with this double whammy of isolation. And so amplified soul live, you know, it's really there to help you connect and feel connected. One of the things that I have learned about myself just in the last year, and I, I mean, I always, always knew I was an extrovert. Like, you know, that's not going to shock anybody, but I, and I've, I've said this before is I crave human inter interaction. Like most people crave air. Mm -hmm. I need it. Or I am rock bottom depressed. And that may be a story I'm telling myself, but I will tell you when I don't have it, mm -hmm. but the longer I stay in my PJs, in the bed, in the, the worse I get, right. uh, which, which in the bed would be true for anybody, but I need interaction. And so one of the things that, that I absolutely am making time to do move, you know, in, in 2018 and certainly 2019 is to get out and speak more and to get out. And, and I've always had a reason why my daughter needs me, my this, my this, my this, but to really focus on not just getting out and speaking, but also attending things like, like what you do, like Amplified Soul Live. So I agree. So important. So, so important. All right. We've got a little bit of delay here. That must mean that the universe is telling us that time is up. We have taken up enough of Ruby's time. I just want you to know for anybody watching or listening, you absolutely must be able to life coach yourself and you must be able to deal with your own stuff in order to survive and thrive in this industry. Too many people crash and burn without it. What Ruby teaches is a deal breaker. 
when it comes to the success of your business. We will add in links on how you can contact Ruby, how you can learn more about her work in the show notes. I believe in you and I believe in your business. You can do this. Thanks for being here on Boss Lady Monday.